Welcome to this week's episode of the Creating Clarity podcast. I have a special guest today. Today, I have Miss Raylan Bodker, who is a health and wellness coach, along with a busy wife, mom, and stepmom. Now, one of the unique things about Raylan is she grew up in the same small town as I did. And she was the typical, like, super awesome cheerleader, multi-sport athlete. She graduated top of her class. And, you know, she just really seemed to have it all. And after she graduated from high school, she actually went on to college on an academic scholarship. However, she actually realized, look, this is not where I want to go right now with my life. And she pivoted and decided to become a mom instead and really grow her family. I love how vulnerable Raylan is. And she talks about some of the experiences that she had that were not so pleasant. Her experience with anxiety and depression and how that led to health issues and battles that she was having with herself. So I am super excited to have Raylan. She is not just a beach body coach, but she also focuses on the mindset and how important that is to achieve what we want to achieve within ourselves. And also talks a little bit about gratitude and having some self-compassion. So without further ado, I bring to you health and wellness coach, Raylan Bodker. Welcome to the Creating Clarity Podcast, where we talk all about clearing the fog, shifting our focus, and uncovering the opportunities that are hidden right in front of us. I'm your host, Dr. Liz Aguirre. Before I begin, I must emphasize that this work is separate from my professional medical work and does not represent medical advice or opinions of any specific organization. Hi, Raylan. Thanks so much for joining me today. I think everybody's in for a treat because I have been so impressed with um, how you talk so much about the mindset that's involved with so many different aspects of your life. And my life, it really resonates with me. But I really want you to kind of introduce yourself and a little bit about your story and how you came to this point where you were able to make those mindset shifts. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and just share a little bit with your listeners. And I hope that what I share today can really resonate with some um, people because I do think it's important. And I've really enjoyed connecting with you as well on you know the whole mindset aspect. Um, so like Liz said, my name is Raylan and I am a wife and mom and stepmom to five kids in a big blended family. And Although my changes and how I got to where I am today really started in the last few years, my story and really what pushed me to get to where I am started way back when, as I'm sure most of you know, um, the roots run deep. And so um, I grew up in a small town, kind of had the idyllic small town feel life on the outside. It was much different on the inside. And all of those little things that I was experiencing really um, came into play early on in my marriage in my early twenties. And I went through a divorce and all of those things I wasn't um, equipped to deal with that I never learned managing emotions, um, really dealing with loss, um, really started to come out as I went through that divorce and it manifested itself in depression and anxiety. And I really had no really good way of dealing with it. And it kind of culminated in a panic attack driving down the highway And that's when I first sought help. And for a while, a good two years, I was living on medication just to survive. Eight to nine. Yeah. That is crazy. I can't even imagine driving down the highway and having a panic attack in that moment. I mean, so you are so right. I mean, the roots do run very deep. And what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, our environment, the people that we're around, the um, things that we put in our body, all of those play into how we feel, how we think, what we do. And, you know, that's such a good point. Now, I want to tap into the blended family just a little bit, because I know that is a big part of your evolution. And, 
um, working on your mindset around that. And just for everybody, um, Ray Lynn actually is a phenomenal coach. She coaches uh, for Beachbody. But what really attracted me to her is her mindset and what she offers her clients in terms of the big picture. And so we're going to move into that a little bit because I think Ray Lynn and I are both on the same page about the baloney diet culture. And I have fallen for it for literally my entire life and I'm coming full circle. But I do think it's important for you to talk a little bit about the blended family because all of us have these thoughts. I can't because of this or they don't get it because of that. I'm different because I experienced this. And I think that your evolution into, um, you know, your marriage as a blended family really has defined you a bit. It has. Like I said, all of those little things kind of um, were under the surface and just kind of came out as a part of my divorce. And when I thought I was dealing with them, it was really just masking by taking medication. And this is not to discount mental health and medications because there is a very real place and need for that. Um, for people, I needed that at that time. I, I don't think I would have gotten where I am now had I not spent that time utilizing that as um, the help that I needed. But I really wasn't actually dealing with the core issues. And it wasn't until I got married and became a stepmom or remarried and became a stepmom that in our new in my new marriage, I carried all of that stuff with me into that. And you know, there was just a real point where we were like struggling every single day, not just as a husband and a wife, but as a mom, a stepmom. You've got, you know, there's one way you parent your kids, there's another way that you parent your stepchildren. And whether we like to think that we're this way or not we have um, predispositions to our own children versus our stepchildren. And it's not, it's not a negative on you. It's just the way we're wired there. It creates mm -hmm. this bond when you give birth to your own child versus you learning to love another person's child. And so um, that struggle as a, as a married couple and a blended family really led us to seek out help in the form of therapy. Um, and it wasn't until I was in therapy as a group kind of that, um, I really realized through the therapist helping me point it out, um, I had a lot of work to do. It really came down to me and me setting the tone for our family and me finally dealing with these things that I was carrying around that I really didn't even, I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was. I knew there were things, but to say that it was a mindset issue or to say that um, I needed to deal with past trauma or um, just my upbringing, I couldn't have verbalized that that's yeah. what it was. It's so hard when you're in the middle of it. And I have an episode called The Fog. And that's what my husband and I coined that term at the very beginning of our marriage when I could not see clearly. When you're in the middle of it, yeah. you cannot see clearly. Um, Raylan, what impact? Okay, well, I just want to point out two things you said. Number one, you sought help from a physician for the point of time you need it. Number two, you had a therapist. And so I bring this up because there is such a stigma around mental health and people not wanting to seek help. And there is a time for it and there is a place for it. And that's not to say you'll always be in that position where you're taking nine pills. You are proof that that is for a point of time as you get to a new place where you're in a healthier place. So I'm glad you brought that up and thank you for sharing that because I think it's so important. Now let's transition a little bit. All of this, your upbringing, the challenges that you had, uh, which by the way, everybody, so if there are any listeners from our hometown, Ray Lynn and I did go to the <laughs> same hometown. We had the opportunity to speak earlier this week and it was literally mind blowing for me that what I thought of her childhood was completely wrong. And what she thought of my childhood was completely wrong. And so, so many times we're comparing ourselves or looking at other people. And the reality is that is absolutely flawed thinking because you have no idea what's under the surface. And that proved to be true for us. But all of this, what you went through, your marriage, your counseling, um, seeking help for depression and anxiety, what impact do you think that had on your health? Everything, honestly, because at the time, much like I was doing with the pills and using um, that as like thinking that I was completely healing myself. 
a, a pill serves a purpose. It, it cleared some of the fog so I could think straight and operate in the day to day. But what it didn't do was get to the root of my issue. And the root of my issue was that I had trauma to deal with. And that, that takes um, peeling back layers. And that is very hard. Um, that is very emotionally taxing work. And I think that's why we seek quick fixes because we don't want to have to literally be um, opened wide up. Yeah. And, it's, you know, it's have a our insides thing. torn apart again. But sometimes it really does take that um, kind of just uncovering and digging deep as hard as it is to get to a place where you can even focus on getting healthy. And so I think what the therapy and all of that did was really open my eyes to the fact that this is deeper. This is not surface. This is not something that I can action my way out of, like by simply saying, oh, I'm going to do a workout today. Oh, I'm going to eat a healthy meal today because you cannot out action a garbage mindset. And until you actually start to find and reframe the stories in your mind that you actually can believe in, you'll never get out of it. Yes. And that is so important because a lot of times we don't even recognize the challenges we've had as traumas and they in fact are, and they're what keeps us back in that place. We continue our suffering because of the garbage thoughts that we feed ourselves. And uh, it's interesting. I just got back from a wellness conference and I just recorded an episode uh, for this podcast because one of the things that I learned is I have low self-compassion and many of us do. Yeah. So tell us, tell me about your self-compassion and where, where you are in that. Um, I think because I grew up in a time and you, you might have experienced this too, because we're very close in age where it was like a do as I say, not as I do. And there was a, a whole like mentality built around like, just pick yourself up by the bootstraps and just keep going yeah. where we don't deal with what's really going on. And um, so I think that I just kind of really developed this um, very critical way of dealing with me. Now, if you were bringing the same exact experiences and presenting them to me from another person, I would have all the compassion in the world. I would make oh, yeah. every reasonable excuse for them. But for me, I would be like, you, sh you should be here by now. You should have already been able to overcome this. Why do you keep having to do this over and over again? Why isn't this sinking in yet? And I would just play those things on repeat. It was just like over a record and over that just again. kept going. Yeah. And so it really became very debilitating for me to make any forward progress. You know, by this time, I already had the two babies in my 30s. I was remarried, had a couple of babies. We had been married like five years or so. Um, and I, you know, my, my baby was like four and here I was still carrying around 40 pounds of extra weight. Now, look, there's no pressure for anybody to lose any weight at any certain rate or whatever. You have to do what's comfortable for you. And it's really about feeling good in your skin and feeling, you know, having that confidence every day when you wake up. And if you don't, it affects you. Yeah, so this isn't and about, this isn't about that diet culture where we're like, you need to look this certain way. It's really about feeling good in your skin. And can I love myself through the process? And I really didn't. I just kept berating myself to the point that I wasn't functioning well and it was bleeding into every area of my life. Oh, yeah. I, I've definitely been guilty of doing that. And, you know, the interesting thing is I've kind of evolved to where I can like identify the negative self talk and, no, like that is just an old story. I'm telling myself that does not apply here. But when it comes to my weight and my health, I am really hard on myself. And so I think we should go there. Something you said reminded me of a quote by, I think her name was Kristen Neff. She says, don't treat your friends like you treat yourself because then you won't have any friends. Oh. And I know that was so powerful because we're so hard on ourselves. So I agree, we have to learn to love ourselves during the journey wherever we are. Let, let's go there. Let's talk a little bit about how you do it. And I'm not gonna comment on this because I just recorded an episode with my, my thoughts on this, but I really think it is so important to hear from other people, their experiences and how you do that. How do you have self-love when your mind is not feeding you 
happy thoughts or pleasant thoughts and is kind of stuck in that negative loop? Well, first, just let me say that if you've never dealt with that, you might not kind of get it. But if you have and you're listening to this, just know that it's hard. Yeah. It's not like something you can just wake up one day and be like, oh, I love myself today and believe that, right? Um, but I think what really helped with that for me was to stop focusing on everything I didn't like about myself and to try every day to find one thing I could celebrate about myself. And even if that meant, <laughs> even if that meant that I got out of bed when my alarm went off and I didn't hit the snooze, something as simple as that, you know what, I'm proud of myself today because I didn't push snooze. I'm proud of myself today because you know what? My eyelashes look really good today. Yeah. I love myself because I like this outfit today, or I love myself because you know what? My counter was a mess and I, and I cleaned it today. And so finding any little thing that you can celebrate about you, your um, self, your um, just your way of life and what you do in the day to day, which we tend to discount as like not important, um, really kind of started creating I guess like those happy emotions. Um, and I know there are medical terms for these and I'm not wow. a physician. So I'll just call, you know, those happy emotions, um, you know, those chemicals that release that, you know, what is it like serotonin and stuff like that? You know, what yeah, they you have endorphins um, that are released yes, and so. this creates happiness. It really does. Yes. And so when you start feeling that, it really starts to um, just kind of create a little something in your mind that's like, huh. Okay, I like that. So can I do more of this? How do and you remind you yourself to do that? How do you, because we, you know, old habits die hard. It's easy to go back into that negative loop. So how do you keep your place? What is your gratitude practice? Do you write it down every morning? Do you, what, what, what's yeah. your practice? So I'll just show you because it's right here because this is where I do that every single morning. But I have a stack of things right here. Oh, awesome. And it's a combination of um, personal development and gratitude. And so one of those is specifically a gratitude journal. And I start my gratitude first with affirmations. Now, whether you're a faith believer or not, you need to find something that works for you. Mine is faith-based. So mine is all the truths that I know about God and what he says about me. And I start with those. And I usually try to do five to 10. And then I just sit thanking God. And I write down wins every single day, even if it's only one, what is a win I can celebrate. So every day I write those down and the next morning, I read what those wins were from the day before. And I do my affirmations and then I do my gratitude. And it's usually just journaling all the things yeah. I'm thankful for in my life. And I'll, I'll be honest, it's been, um, I really started at the beginning of this year, getting serious with that, like where I was like, okay, I'm committed. And so now I share it on social media every single morning to keep myself accountable. But, um, I started in January, so we're at eight months or so, and it really started very sloppy. I mean, it was like, oh, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my home. And those are good things to be thankful for. But when you can get really into digging deep and you're, you're, you know, you're very thankful for the fact that um, I did something hard today. It wasn't easy. It, it, you know, you just, you, you start out writing a few phrases and the next thing you know, you're writing paragraphs and pages long and um, it really develops over time and it's, and it's hard, but you've got to start somewhere. That's the key. We've got to start somewhere. We all like to discount, you know, or say, I don't have time for this. Yeah, uh, that's, the, but, that is the easiest thing to do. It's easy to say, I don't have time for it. And we believe And I it. would say you can't afford to not make the time for oh, it. Of course, either you're going to make time for wellness and health now, or you're going to make time for the illness later. And exactly. I've heard that yes. quote and I've seen it in patients in the hospital. And honestly, that was part of my journey to wellness too, is seeing patients that I was rounding on thinking, gosh, they're not that much older than me. And if I don't take care of myself. Now, um, okay, I think this is important. I don't know if you know this, Raylan, but my mission is to start a movement, the Me First movement, where we're learning to prioritize our health and well-being and not, and not letting, you know, our work or our families or things that are we love and are important to, um, not let those things come before our essentials and our needs. 
Um, along those lines, though, and speaking of self-love and speaking about all of this, we have to learn to love ourselves where we are. And yeah. that is really hard. So in some of your coaching clients and in some of the individuals that you work with, I'm sure there's some common themes, maybe some thoughts that they have that are not helpful. Um, let, give us an example of that and how you would help them pass that. <clears throat> okay. Well, one of the biggest ones that I get a lot is the, I don't have time for this. Um, that across the board is number one. And I actually shared a reel on social media yesterday combating the I don't have time for this because what it re really boils down to is it's not that we don't have time. It's that not, we're not prioritizing our time or um, thinking about our time in a way that we can maximize it. So yesterday I was sitting in Carline. Um, this is just an example of how I would coach a client. And back to school, Carline. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole episode in itself, but I was sitting there and it was an hour in the car line on day one. Oh, so I knew I was going to have ex a, an extensive amount of time yesterday as well. This first week getting, you know, everybody back in the swing of things. Um, and as I sat there, I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm sitting here for an hour. And what, what do I want to do? I want to just scroll social media and do nothing. Right. But instead I went on and recorded a reel and, and shared it and gave moms, women's parents, whoever tips on what they could do while they're sitting in car line to maximize their time. And it was read a book, listen to a podcast, yeah. do some personal development, maybe clean out your car, clear some clutter. So you can think a little bit clearly. And it's really finding ways that you prioritize the time that you have. So say you only have 15 minutes, I might share with somebody, they're like, boom, 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 this is my day. And I'm like, okay, well, how much time are you spending on this? Have you time blocked it out to really see how much it's gonna take? Okay, let's say you only have 15 minutes. What can we do in those 15 minutes? Well, you could probably walk on the treadmill or go for a walk around the block. You could probably do you know, three sets of 10 squats, some push-ups, some sit-ups, very simple, just something to get your blood flowing, something to get you. I actually find during a workout and after a workout, I'm very hyper-focused. Uh -huh. My energy is dialed in and I'm the most productive right after that. That's why I like to work out in the morning. Yeah. Um, it really sets my day up. And so I just work with them to actually write down what you do in a day and be realistic about assigning the amount of time it takes you. So then we can really examine, kind of look at it under a microscope and be like, where can we fit in the things that we need? So for me, I spend, you know, I do my gratitude journaling. I spend my 30 minutes doing a workout and then I make a shake in the morning for breakfast because it's quick and easy. And I make sure that I've got veggies, I've got protein, I've got carbs, I've got fruit. It's completely balanced. It's got everything I need to kickstart my day. And we make no excuses. <laughs> I love that, Raylan, because so many times we make excuses for why we can't eat, quote, healthy. And, um, you know, the, the challenges are there. I agree. But if you're prepared and you have a routine and you know what you're going to do when you're going to do it, it does take out the thinking energy and then it becomes a habit and you just continue to do it. Now, speaking of what we eat. How do you help your clients who are trying to eat nourishing foods that are good for our body? And, and notice I say that because I am so over the diet culture and I am so over labeling foods good as, and bad. The reality is there is room in our diets for all of it in moderation, but I like to instead focus on the nourishment it offers our body. Now, I do know that you probably work with some clients that think that I'm never going to be able to eat what I want to eat again. How do you help them pass those limiting beliefs? Well, it's exactly what you said. There's room for all of it in our life in moderation. And I'll just put this out there. Um, again, I am not a doctor, but this is just personal observation and experience that I'm speaking from. So please take it as that. And, you know, my results and what I experience are not what everybody else does. But I think this is helpful to remind ourselves. Yo-yo dieting or diet culture really happens because of a couple of things. But one important thing is we're overeating a lot. Everywhere you go, when you order something, let's say you're out to eat and you order something, That's it is so like true. twice as much of the food that we need. However, the overeating really, I believe, happens 
because we spend so much time trying to under eat. Mm. And that is what's leading to our overeating. If we would actually feed our bodies enough regularly, we wouldn't have those binging weekends or I've done good all day. And now I went crazy at night, yes, right? It's yes. probably because we're a little too restrictive during the day. And so I really try and find out with clients, what does your nutrition look like now? Like, this is not a judgment, just lay it out there for me. Because here's the thing, we cannot fix what we won't confront. Yeah. And if you have to be honest, honest with yourself. Yes. Oh my goodness. We said the word at the same time, people, you have to be honest, not honest with yourself. Yeah. It's very hard. And I think that's why, uh, again, it, it kind of leads into that mindset. It, we, we're trying to trick ourselves into thinking that we're doing things right. When reality is we're probably need to tweak some things. And so I really work with them on like, okay, you're, you're starving yourself all day. And then you're wondering why you're binging every night and on the weekends, but getting them to write down and really bringing to the forefront exactly what their nutrition looks like is how we can help dial it in. And I am a firm believer in that balance aspect. Like I'm about to make a German chocolate cake today to celebrate my son's birthday tonight. And you bet your butt I'm having some of that. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not, not having that. I'm not, not enjoying life. I'm not going to not celebrate the people in my life and the holidays. You know, I was uh, working with somebody earlier this year and she was like, I just don't know if I can do this because, you know, this holiday's coming up and then we have these yes. birthday parties and I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Yeah. She's like, well, so, I won't be able to eat that. I was like, yes, you can. Yes, how you do can. You coach, how do you coach clients that like, you know, Social eating is so, so prominent. We do it for holidays. We do it for birthday parties. We do it for baby showers. How would you guide someone to be aware of their hunger cues and eat whatever they want during those events as long as they're hungry, right? Because that's a key is yeah. recognizing when your body is hungry versus mindless eating because everybody around you is eating. How, how, how would you guide someone there? Well, there are a couple of things I would say to that. So mindless eating is a very real thing. And when my kids were little, I did it a lot because I kept a lot of snacks on hand, you know, cause we were always going places and, you know, I have older kids and I have younger kids. So we were, you know, running to football practice and I've got a toddler and an infant in tow. So I've got snacks in a diaper bag. And then I would be tempted to just snack on whatever they had. Right. Um, so as I've gotten older, I've uh, eliminated that by, I don't keep junk snacks in the house mm. that are appealing to me. My vice is chocolate, cake, desserts, any of that. So I literally just keep those to a minimum or it has to be something that's made and prepared, which takes time. And then I probably will lose the desire by the time I realize how much work it's going to take me to make that. But I really think that that goes back into the mindset and it's drilling into what was that event back in the day, probably Maybe somebody said something hurtful to you at a birthday party or something like that. Something led you to reach for those unhealthy things that you now find as a super comfort to you that you gravitate towards at any and all times. So that or hard. even um, you have an association with a very pleasant experience. Like I remember my first vacation ever to Disney and when we were in the airport, my mom said I could get whatever I want. And I had a big Kit Kat and it was so yummy. I had never had it before. And now every time they see a Kit Kat, it, they have that association of yeah. greatness. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. it is so, so true. Okay. Well, I think that, you know, we are, we are wrapping up here, but I do want to ask one more big question. Uh, and that is we all have different body types. And it is not fair for us to compare ourselves to other people of different body types. And when we do that, we become very unhappy in our skin. Yeah. So have you had any, um, you know, coaching clients that you've worked through that with and self acceptance for different types of bodies? Surprisingly enough, no, that has not mm. come up. But what I will say, I do really feel that uh, question because as a mom, I've always had more, well, I've always had more of an athletic body structure. I'm 5'10". I've never, been, I've never been, I wouldn't say super skinny. People always tell me, even when I said, you know, my journey is I've actually lost almost 50 pounds 
And they're like, I wouldn't have even thought you had 50 pounds to lose. And I'm like, yeah, they're like, you carry it so well. Well, I, I hate hearing that. <laughs> yes, I don't like yes. hearing that you carry it so well. But as a mom, you know, going from a, um, a young adult to then having kids like your body even changes then and there are certain things that happen when you're pregnant, you know, your hips open up and your body, your ligaments and things are moving to make room for baby and delivery and I, I just don't, I mean, there are people that get back to that. I was not one of those people. And so it was a journey for me too, learning to accept this new way that my body looked. And I'm not just talking about carrying the weight. I'm just talking about the shape. Like yeah, I was always changes. like this. And now I have a little bit more of a figure and I'm like, even still I put on stuff and I'm like, why does this fit like that? And I look and I'm like, well, this is just my body now. And it's okay because I love my body because it does a lot for me. It gets me up every day. It allows me to do the things I need to do. I get to take care of my home. I get to take care of my family. And you know what? I also, I live a, I lift a crap amount of weight and I'm really there strong and go. I'm proud of that work that I've done. So it it's goes not about, again, it's not the about gratitude. getting something else. It's about loving where you're at in the journey and also recognizing that you can love where you're at and love your body and still want to make changes. And that's okay too. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, Raylan, I just love all the work you're doing. I love that you are incorporating the mindset piece into the big picture of health and wellness. I think that is lacking for a lot of people. If anybody listening wants to reach out to you or work with you, how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much again uh, for having me on. I've really enjoyed this. Um, you can reach me at Instagram at Raylan B stays fit. I'm sure that Liz will share that in the show notes. Absolutely. And there are a couple of ways to work with me um, right now. You can hit the link in my bio there on Instagram and it'll take you to the work with me section. Um, I do most of my coaching in group settings. There are options after you get started for one-on-one, -on -one, but the beauty of my groups and what I love about partnering with Beachbody is that I do it in a small group setting, but I can message you privately. We can have private talks. You get nutrition, you get fitness, you get mindset help from me. And research really does show that people who have a group when they're starting out are much more successful at sticking on the journey because you know that there are other people doing it with you. And so we check in daily and we have a lot of fun and it's just a super cool opportunity to meet other people on a journey just like you. And plus, when you sign up with me, you get my coaching for an entire year. Wow. Okay, guys. So I and will if anybody shows up and or signs up through um, the link in my bio and you mention this podcast in there, I've got a $20 off code for you guys. Okay. So. I will be sure to include all that information in the show notes. So Raylan, thank you so much for being here today. I honestly feel like we probably could talk for five hours. So I think at some point we'll definitely have to have you back on. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you won't miss the next episode. And if you like this episode, please share it with a friend and give me a five-star review so that I can reach more people. I'll see you next week. Disclaimer, the views and opinions shared here are for information and educational purposes only. They do not serve as a medical or professional advice. They do not represent any academic, medical, or professional institution or organization. If you found this helpful, don't forget to leave a five-star review. Thank you.